Finally, I have freedom to choose to. Freedom tomorrow history. And please wave the Philippine flag as we welcome our guest of honor, Senator from the Republic of the Philippines, Honorable Risa Ontiveros. everyone, my name is Janelle So and you are watching So Janelle. This is your weekly dose of Filipino stories of immigration and representation. Ngayong hapon, makakasama po natin ang isa sa mga my personal favorite uh, senators uh, from the Philippines, Honorable Risa Ontiveros, uh, Senator, Republic of the Philippines. Hello and welcome to So Janelle. Thank you, So Janelle. Yes, this is um, the second time. Mm -mm. The last time was 2019. Imagine, Same. half a decade ago. And same event, yes. right? This is Kalayaan, which is a yearly gathering of Filipino leaders and community leaders, esteemed leaders, um, just to celebrate Philippine Independence Day. Yes. First, of course, I, I'd like to get your thoughts, your Independence Day message. Well, um, wherever we celebrate it in the world, um, it's really special when we Filipinos come together to celebrate that independence, now 126 years old, to honor our heroes, our forefathers and mothers who fought and who lived and who worked so that we can now uh, keep trying to make that independence really full and fully felt uh, on an everyday basis. And thank you so much to the Filipino-American community here in Los Angeles and Kalayan Incorporated in particular for inviting me again to join you in this celebration. We talked about that um, at an event last night as yes. well, the difference between independence and really freedom. Yes, Kalayaan, sovereignty. Yes, yes, Kalayaan versus Kasarinlan. Uh -oh. And your thoughts on that? Because every year, I remember since I started doing this, mm -hmm. these shows here in the U.S. for the Filipino audience, yes. um, mm -hmm. we always talk about Philippine Independence Day. The question is, are we truly free? Mm -mm. Are we truly independent? Mm -mm. And I really appreciate that distinction you made, Janelle, when you expertly oh, no. <laughs> uh, hosted, yeah, really, uh, the town hall meeting in Artesia last night. Because we can be formally, officially free, but we may be to a greater or lesser degree actually sovereign, actually self-determining. Right. And that's our challenge, I guess, year to year mm -hmm. in the Philippines and as Filipinos wherever we are in the world that we really need to keep striving for our ability to decide on our political, our economic, even our social cultural right. future. Yes, and so I wanted to talk to you about that too because you mentioned year after year, is there mm. progress? The last time that I spoke to you was 2019. Right. Five years later, where are we now? And we're going to be, I'm going to give you a little bit of pause to think okay. about that. <laughs> we'll pause for a break when we return on the show. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us here on Sojanel. Happy Sunday if you're watching on TFC. Happy Saturday if you're watching on ANC. And happy Monday if you're watching on KXLA Channel 44, which is a local channel here okay. in Southern California, talking to the Honorable Senator from the Philippines, Ms. Risa Hontiveros, um, guest of honor at this year's Kalayaan event. So yeah, 2019 was the last time we saw each other. Same nice. setting, same event, although nice. different hotel, uh -huh, different true. venue. <laughs> Have things changed at that time we were approaching an election year right. and there was a lot of hope mm -mm. for for change for progress in the philippines mm -hmm. and now it's two years after that election correct well um so much has changed actually although there are important things that have stayed the same but thinking about that we're talking again after half a decade um this is like post-pandemic, and when we first talked, it was pre-pandemic. Pre also this time, uh, we experienced all over the world a swing to the right, to populism, authoritarianism, a wave of uh, strong men, um, not just in the Philippines, but elsewhere uh, in the world. Um, there's a lot of both promise and also peril mm -hmm. from that great cultural revolution called the internet and social media and now 
uh, AI or artificial intelligence. And the economies of countries and the global economy are still failing to meet the aspirations of every human being on the planet for a truly human life. So anyway, I guess, Janelle, there's still so much to do. So right. it's a good time to be alive. Right? Yeah. But is it a good time to be a female leader in the Philippines? As you mentioned, there is this somehow, w w would we say, resurgence yes. or um, fascination mm. with s strong authoritarian men, mm -hmm. sort of saying dictators, yes. right? Um, mm -hmm. Is it is it a good what, where does that Filipina leader mm -hmm. fit in that scenario? I guess it's always a good time because uh, being a human being uh, who happens to be a woman um, means there's always that bright promise for every woman like us who's participating in or representing in or even leading in political processes. But this time, like many others or most others in our history, uh, is not less difficult. There's still a lot of blocks or barriers. Um, there's a lot of untapped potential. Mm -hmm. There are many changes that have to happen, not just in the external political or economic environment, but even in our worldviews. Yes, so yes. the cultural change often is the most important, right. but sometimes the most difficult. But it's also the longest to take, exactly. right? It, it takes years for it culture does. to form, it, and so mm -hmm. it will also take years for culture to change. Yes, it takes years, it takes generations. Right. It's it's part of the work of a lifetime. Right, mm. right. But, um, kamusta ba sa Philippines ngayon? Para dun sa mga hindi nakaka-uwi, we hear the stuff in the news. Mm -hmm. In broad strokes, um, kamusta sa Pilipinas should describe how is the administration two years into its term what's happening in terms of the conflicts between the two leading factions uh, in government surprisingly those conflicts emerging so early in yes. the administration even before the midterm elections next year uh, in many ways there seems to be open warfare between them in the meantime there are still a lot of potentials, but also still difficulties in different important sectors of our economy, right. including agriculture, including manufacturing, uh, the infrastructure in the country, the, the whole energy or power sector, um, specific other sectors like BPOs or business process outsourcing, um, uh, some sector of the service sector of our economy, even mining, right? And uh, in all of these, the opposition therefore sees uh, opportunities and challenges uh, for next year, 2028, and all the years after that. So those are broad strokes, mm. uh, but I would want I want you to comment on specifics as well because okay. a lot of our kababayans here are particularly interested in some of the new uh, the issues um in the philippines west philippine sea mm. the kiboloy issue yes. the alice guo issue we're gonna be talking about that when <laughs> okay. we return on the show don't go away <laughs> 